Hello and welcome to the Cranky Old Gamer. Today we're going to be taking a look at a game that uh, has very quickly become one of my favorites. Bit of a spoiler there, it's a good review. Uh, but this one took me a while to get it to the table. A lot of my, my gamers were like, sounds complicated, it sounds tough. A um, little bit of history on this game. I had my eye on this for a while, but over the summer, as many of you know, Fantasy Flight Games and Games Workshop split apart. And a lot of their games are no longer going to be made. Hence, uh, I immediately jumped to, you'll see right where my finger is, Death Angel. Got that. Awesome. The other game, Fury of Dracula. Ah, ah, ah. Um, I can't promise you I won't do any more impressions in the future, but... Um, so yes, Fury of Dracula. It was worth it. It was worth the wait. I love this game. Pain in the ass to set up, but once you got the setup, it's actually a very simple game. It's not challenging. I mean, it's challenging. It's not difficult to play. It's not very heavy. It's just the setup because there are so many tokens, so many cards, um, but it's a deduction game. It is a secret movement or hidden movement game. One of you plays Dracula. That was me, of course. And the rest of you play the Hunters. Now, you can play it as low as two-player. Uh, one of you is Dracula, one of the other would play all four Hunters. We played a group of three of us. I played Dracula, each other player took two Hunters, and they chased me all over Europe. I won in the end, but barely. Uh, I, I, the game, I would say, favors Dracula a little bit. Uh, because it's so asymmetrical, it's four against one. Dracula needs a leg up. Um, the players spend their entire time, the hunters, I'm sorry, spend their entire time hunting Dracula. Dracula has hidden movement, just putting face cards face down so you know exactly where you're at, but they don't know, and you're hiding from them. Hence, hidden movement. Uh, let's take a look at some of the components so you'll see what I mean. All right, now one of the things that I do love is that the game has a reference book and a learn to play. This is gonna teach you all of the rules. This is just gonna be a quick reference. Just exactly like the name says, but it's come in very, very handy during games. The game also features one of the nicest game boards I've seen in a long time. As you can see from my hands, it's huge. Uh, it is six panels wide. It is all of Europe. Uh, you've got your various seas down here. You've got different kinds of, you've got big cities, you've got small villages. You've got a hospital here. That's for when uh, somebody dies. You've got a time counter here. All this is your information on how Dracula is doing and how much time you have left to find him. Uh, each phase has a day and a night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And every time you complete a full week, you add a despair token to the sun. And once that is complete, once you have all three despair tokens, then Dracula gets a whole lot more powerful as his power washes over the land. Your goal is to defeat Dracula before he can move his counter up this track. He starts at zero. Certain actions allow him to slide his counter up. If he gets to 13, you die. Players also have miniatures. Uh, there's a miniature for each character. Uh, the miniatures are very, very small, but they are, they're fairly well uh, crafted, very detailed. Kind of see here. My camera doesn't like zooming in up close here. All right, but you get the idea. Now, as I said, part of the biggest challenge of this game is the setup. Once you've got everything set up, it's not that difficult. But as you can see, there's a lot of different kinds of cards. And lastly, tokens. Oh my god, so many tokens. There are a lot of games out there that have more tokens. This is true. Uh, Betrayal at House on the Hill has probably three times as many tokens. But you use all these, the whole game. Betrayal has like one or two tokens for each of its 50 scenarios. This, you use all these. And then you have the Despair Clock. I like these tokens. I just think they're pretty. Each time you complete a week, place another token down until the world is steeped in despair. As you can see, 
The components of this game are top-notch. Uh, Fantasy Flight games spared no expense. Uh, the cards have a lovely linen finish. They're very durable. Uh, a couple pieces I didn't quite go over. Each character has a, a character card with stats. Each character is different, has a different ability. Um, for example, Dracula has the Fury of Dracula. Uh, Lord Godalming gets extra tickets. Uh, John Seward, uh, when you or another hunter in your city rests, that hunter gets two damage. Okay, good. Uh, Mina Harker, if you are in the same city as another hunter, force Dracula to tell you if he's in your region. And of course, everybody's favorite, Dr. Van Helsing. Uh, he, when you trade, you can choose to trade event cards instead of items with any hunter in any city. You don't have to be sharing a city. That's very, very handy. Uh, Strong-willed, you have two bite spaces. You have to be bitten twice before the bite takes effect. So, uh, one thing that I did think was interesting, um, there is a, an event card for Jonathan Harker. There's no Renfield. How do you... How do you have Dracula without Renfield? He's like the best character. For those of you that are not like intimately familiar with Dracula lore, Renfield is Dracula's bitch. He is a psychotic little wormy sycophant that just worships Dracula and eats bugs. And he's just delightful. Uh, if you've not read the book, Dracula, I highly recommend it. It's a great book. Or check out the uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula movie that came out like 94. It's a little dated, but Gary Oldman, oh, I love that movie. Once again, you've seen now the setup and the components. So now let's get into a little bit of how the game is played. Now, as I said, playing the game is not all that difficult once you actually get the setup done. Uh, each of the characters starts in a special place uh, that is designated by the game and... You have two phases, a day and a night phase, before it becomes Dracula's turn. Uh, you can only move during the day. Now you can move there, if you look, you can see there are red lines and yellow lines. You can move freely one space down a red line, which is a road, or you can reserve a train ticket and move however many spaces that, if you have a, a two, you can move two in one turn. You can also take other actions. You can rest and heal a hit point. You can, if you're in the same city as somebody, you can trade items. You can use a special ability. For example, Mina Harker has the ability because she's, if you know anything about Dracula lore, Mina was bitten and she's slowly but surely turning. Mina has the ability to ask if Dracula is in her immediate area, uh, designated by the color zones. So Mina could be somewhere in Milan and ask, is Dracula in Italy? If Dracula is currently hiding in any of these cities, he has to say, yes, I am in that area. And all the players can kind of start making their way. Other actions that can be taken, you can reserve a train ticket. You can also search the city you're in, which will reveal all encounter cards that Dracula has placed there, if he has placed one, or reveal if Dracula is there. You can also use a supply action, which differs depending on which area you're in. These larger squares are big cities. You get an item card and an event card. In the smaller little villages, you just get an event card, but it could be beneficial, it could be detrimental. Once the hunters have completed their day and night phases, it begins Dracula's phase. Now Dracula's phase is completely different. Dracula has a deck of locations. Um, these locations, there is one for every city on the board. You can see. And you actually get to look through this deck. You don't just have to draw from it. Now you'll notice there are some that are red and blue. This is how the players get a hint of where Dracula is. These are all cities, these are sea locations. Now the way that it's played, this is your starting location. Dracula can pick anywhere. So let's say Dracula has picked Granada. Granada is just south of Madrid. Dracula also has a hand of event cards. Got Sagani bodyguards, reckless vampire, bats, bodyguard, spy, whatever. There's a whole bunch of different cards. And you choose one to hide in that city. You place that down with the location. And that's where Dracula is right now. Nobody knows where Dracula can be except for Dracula. Dracula knows he's in Granada. 
when the next day cycles through and it's Dracula's turn again, this gets moved down one. Dracula has to move by road. He cannot take a train. He can also move by sea, but that's a little bit different. So Dracula would then take his card from his hand, whichever one he wants to play, and place it in that city. And so on and so forth as this moves down until you get to the end of the track here. Now let's say Dracula wants to travel at sea. Say this is a, a port town, which is anything with an anchor on it. Dracula then has to choose one of the sea cards, whichever one he's adjacent to, and place that card down. Now, all of the hunters can see that that's a blue card. If that's a blue card, they know, hey, Dracula's at sea, let's go find him. The same is also for this card here, Castle Dracula, which actually has the Castle Dracula emblem on it. If I play this card on here, they know where I am and can start heading towards me. Dracula also has a series of powers, uh, Misdirect, Feed, Wolf Form, and Dark Call. There is also a card in here that is Hide. Uh, and it looks, looks just like, it has a back just like the Towns, so a player doesn't know that he's still there. Now, the way that Dracula wins is by moving and pushing these cards down this track. If a card gets to this last track, it is called Matured. You take whatever event card was on here, and all of them have a Matured effect. For example, if this Reckless Vampire gets Matured and makes it all the way to the end, the Influence track goes up, and Dracula gains points. As I said, this has quickly become one of my favorite games in my collection. I had a blast. Uh, I played Dracula and my friends played the Hunters and they had a great time trying to hunt me down. They almost caught me a couple of times and I really got this genuine sense of like ebb and flow where there were times where I was like, ha 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 ha, I am Dracula, you will never catch me. And then there were times when I was cowering, go, oh God, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. They're gonna find me, I'm gonna die. And it kind of came and went the whole time. Like, it was this great game of cat and mouse as they're, like, right behind me. And I repeatedly, the way I beat them this time, and I'm almost hesitant to reveal this because now they're going to know next time, is I basically played Bugs Bunny with them. Um, when, I, when they would move a city, I'd be right behind them. You ever seen, like, where Elmer Fudd is, like, creeping by with his gun trying to hunt Bugs Bunny, not knowing that Bugs is literally right behind him? doing this. Uh, that's what I did the whole time. Uh, once I was like, oh God, they're going to kill me. They're going to catch me. They'd move to a city. I'd move right behind them. Do, do, do. Um, in the end, they weakened me, but I was able to mature enough vampires that they were not able to catch me. They did find me a number of times and I, oh, so much fun. Um, this makes me really want to try another game that's very similar called Spectre Ops. Uh, I actually own it, but I haven't gotten into the table yet. That, that just got bumped up because I really like hidden movement. Um, so yeah, Fury of Dracula. It's currently, it's out of print, but there's still a lot of copies in circulation. You can still get it. So right now it's kind of looking around $50 to $60. Highly recommend you pick it up now. Please do yourself a favor. This game is fantastic. It is so much fun. One to five players. Oh my God, check it out. It's great. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. Uh, if you do enjoy my videos, please do check out my Patreon down below uh, in the description. It is patreon.com slash thecrankyoldgamer. Please consider donating. Not only are you helping an artist, it's not much. You can donate $5. That's, that's less than a sandwich. Um, but it helps me out. And you get your name in the credits. And, you know, you get that good karma of feeling like you supported an artist. Uh, guys, also check out my Instagram, instagram.com slash the cranky old gamer, or just on the app, the cranky old gamer. Follow me, look at all my video game pictures, my board game pictures, my geeky pictures, uh, pictures of me and my cat and my friends. Um, I try to keep it mostly board game centered, but uh, whatever tickles my fancy. Uh, also, facebook.com slash the cranky old gamer. And if you're in the Orlando area and you want to check me out and play a game with me, you can always email me at the cranky old gamer at gmail.com. 
And if you are a game developer that would like to see me do a video for your Kickstarter, your pre-Kickstarter, any kind of indie game, please email me. I would be more than happy to do a video for you. All right, guys, so once again, this has been Fury of Dracula by Fantasy Flight Games and Games Workshop. I cannot recommend this game enough. This game is fantastic. Thanks for watching.